Hey traders, this is Jake from Optimus Futures, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to find and analyze trading opportunities with TrendSpider's Market Scanner. Now, more specifically, I'll be teaching you how to set up and customize a market scanner with different filters, different time frames, and assets. I'll demonstrate scanning for trades based on user defined criteria. And I'll guide users on analyzing and comparing scan results for potentially better decision making. Now, I would suggest before even getting started with this feature that you create and customize your own watch list with the different symbols that you're interested in scanning. Now, the reason I say this is because a market scanner works very closely with the watch list feature. Whatever products are added to any specific watch list is the different products that your market scanner will scan for. And I'll show you that in just a minute, but if you are not familiar with this feature, First, go ahead and add a symbol to the top right left of your chart. In this case, I have the MES. Once you have a symbol added, click on the star to the right of it. As you can see here, I already have a watch list open and I've already created some of my own watch list before making this video. But in your case, if you haven't done one already, go ahead and click create new watch list. And when you do, go ahead and give it a name. In this case, maybe I can name mine micros and then go ahead and type in any symbol you're interested in scanning. So in this example, I'll just do all micro contracts. I can add the micro gold futures. I can add micro crude oil futures, for example. I can add the MNQ, which is the e -mini, uh, micro e-mini NASDAQ 100 futures and something like the MYM, which is the e-mini micro Dow futures. Once I have all the symbols that I'm interested in scanning added to this list, I can go ahead and click create. Now, since I already have this, I didn't, but you can see this watch list is available in the top right hand corner. Now, if you're not seeing the watch list that you just made, click this drop down menu, make sure yours is selected and you'll be able to see any custom watch list that you created. If you still don't see it, try searching for it in the top right here. Or if there's anything that else, you know, other than what you've created catches your eye, feel free to feel free to scroll through or search through the list to find a watch list that you're interested in. Now, to actually use the market scanner right above the watch list, there's a market scanner button. And when you click this and it turns green, it'll activate the market scanner right below your chart. Now, from here, you first want to choose a name for your uh, scan. And then you want to choose which watch list the market scanner scans through. This is why I went through this first. That way you already have a watch list that you're interested in products that you care about and want to get more info on will already be available for you. Again, there's a ton of different watch lists available within this platform. So if you don't want to create your own, if there's a general topic like energy or finance or healthcare that you're interested in, feel free to choose one of those general topics and it'll scan it all for you. Before we move on, let's go ahead and look at a sample example. They have many samples created from TrendSpider themselves or other users that you can choose from. In this one, this will be scanning for 2% or more above the previous close. And this is scanning through the S&P 500 index. Now, if you actually like this and you wanna just change the actual watch list or the index it's scanning through, you can click this drop down and you can customize this to whatever you want. So if you prefer this sample, just because it's set to the S&P 500 index by default does not mean it's restricted to that. So in my example, I can click on micros if I wanted to. And as long as this criteria was hit, it will trigger and it'll once I click scan, will show in my market scanner here. And you can see, all of the criteria that was triggered and came back in my market scanner meets exactly that. You can see all of these five products close 2% or more above the previous close. As you can see, they're all 2% or above. Once you have your criteria set, again, we didn't have to do that for this example. This was already a sample, but it's already been pre-built for, so you just wanna click scan you'll see the results are in the same window here. It'll take a couple seconds depending on how many actual products are within your watch list. 
the more you have in the watch list, the more the longer it may take to get your scan back. Once the results are in, they'll populate on this right hand side. We actually already saw the results from this scan previously. I had done this before the video started. That's why you saw this there, but you'll see it's currently searching through scanning and it'll populate all five in just one second here. Now from here, if you want to save this, you can click stop and then save. You can clone this scanner. There's different options and templates you could do for yourself. This is a sample. So there's really not much for me to customize here other than this main sample. But if I wanted to save it and use it later, I can click clone and, and save it for later. In my example, let's go ahead and create something new and then we could save it. So if you want to create something new, something not pre-built, you can go ahead and click new scanner. And if you have watched our video on how to use the automated trading strategies through the strategy tester tool, this works very similar. Instead, it's just scanning the market instead of actually placing orders. So like I showed you, first you want to change the name. We could do this test or test micros. It doesn't really matter as long as you're familiar with what this is. Choose our index. In this example, I'll choose the one I created, micros. Choose my chart type. Choose whether I want the overnight extended hours to be considered when scanning for this data. And whether or not I want the current candle to be scanned within this uh, functionality. If this is unchecked, as you can see, it'll ignore the currently open candle. Now the futures market is actually closed at the time of me making this video. So it shouldn't take into effect this function anyway, but regardless, if you want the current candle scan, go ahead and make sure this is checked off. Now from here, we need to choose a parameter for our scan. We can do that by clicking add parameter here, this underlined option. We can load it from a previously saved uh, scan or template. We can create a condition group, which is almost like an if then statement or and or, or we can do condition. From here, we can scan based on a price, indicator, candle pattern, chart pattern, earnings, earning date, values, dividend dates, dividend values, uh, stock splits, news content, analyst estimates, or your watch list. Let's go ahead and look through a couple of different options. For example, if I want to only scan for markets that settled above a previously traded price or a specific price, first I need to pick my time frame. Let's do 30 minutes, for example. Let's do open, greater than, and let's do constant value. So this way I can choose, for example, if any markets closed above 4,000. Now, of course, with the futures markets and the products that I have here, the point in tick values are completely different on some of these symbols. This may not be the best example for this, but just doing it as a very simple example, I want to show you what this would populate with. So let's go ahead and click scan. And as we can see here, the MES traded above 4,000, the MYM traded above 4,000 today, and so did the MNQ. Again, as I mentioned, this may actually not be the best example just because you can see the MYM is trading at 34,200 while the MES is trading at 4,181. Quite a bit of a price differential there, but they are completely different products, different tick values, different point values. This may not be the best criteria to filter by, but again, just showing you how you could potentially use it in your own trading especially whether it be stocks or if you wanted to compare something like the MIM with the MNQ and, you know, compare them, contrast, this would be a good way to do so. Let's make a new scan just with something a little bit different that may be a little bit more applicable. Let's go ahead and do micros again. We're going to name this something different. We'll just do test and let's go ahead and add another parameter. Let's do another condition. And it is, this example, maybe I want to do it based on an indicator. We'll do it on a 30 minute. And let's do a simple moving average. This is a 50 simple moving, uh, simple moving average. And let's have it greater than greater or equal to another indicator 
on a 30 minute. And in this case, let's do another simple moving average. Now, if you have seen our other video on the strategy tester, you can see that you can actually customize the length of these simple moving averages. So this one is set to a 50 length. Let's set this to 20. And when I go ahead and scan, let's see if I'm given any results, nothing. So in this case, again, this is just a hypothetical example I've just come up with on the spot. There may no be rhyme or reason to why you would actually want to scan this. I just wanted to put it in to see what happened. And you can see in this example, this is actually what it looks like if it's unable to find a match and no scan criteria is met. So I'm glad we were able to populate this. This may not have been the best example, but again, now you can see what happens if no criteria is met. Let's just do one of the other examples that have been pre-built into the uh, platform. Let's go ahead and do a 10% pullback after a 20% rally and we'll see how they configured it. So again, we'll choose from the market scan on the left hand side here. Choose that example. It already has a name for itself and they configured it by change in percentage. You can see they had the length as 10, moving average length of 14, the sum length of 14. They had the same down here at the bottom. Then it's greater than or equal to a constant value of 20. And this is less than a constant value of negative 10. Let's go ahead and scan this. This is for the Russell 2000 index. So far we have one result. And if you wanted to, you could get pretty complex with this. Here we have Riot. We can go ahead and add those same simple moving averages to our platform. So as you can see here, there's already a 50 simple moving average added to our software. So we can see how this is playing out in real time. Here's our simple moving average. And we can see that that criteria was greater than or greater than a constant value of 20 and less than a constant value of 10. That's why this triggered. Same thing with this stock right here. The simple moving average is already added to our chart. We can look at this in real time and we can see that the criteria was met, hence the market scanner populated these results. So there's multiple ways to approach this as a user. I think if you compare and contrast, maybe even open different workspaces using the workspace functionality in the top right here, you can open multiple windows and multiple different tabs. Go ahead and choose a different view and a different watch list for each window and then really uh, swap back and forth if you needed to do different market scans on each window. There's really unlimited pop possibilities on how you wanted to approach this. But we just wanted to show a basic introduction of how this feature worked, how to set it up with very simple parameters, and how you can use this to potentially find and make better decisions in your trading. We hope this video helped. If you have any questions on this topic, feel free to come to our community forum. It's community.optimistfutures.com. We have a subcategory dedicated to TrendSpider, so any TrendSpider questions you have, feel free to place them down in our forum or in our comment section down below. Feel free to leave them there, and we'll follow up with you down there as well. Thanks again for watching, and we hope this, this helped.